I think every, every subject that interests you, it has to be a personal subject. It has to be connected to you personally. So for me, the idea about doing a project about this started with me when I heard about ISIS when they kidnapped these Yazidi women in northern Iraq and Syria. It's, the idea kept stayed in my mind for a while. And now it was the best time maybe for me to work on it, especially being in another country and trying to understand the modern slavery and the sex trafficking internationally. It's a really different issue when you try to understand how big it is, how huge the subject it is. And uh, I think there's no enough, enough light on this issue. And I think that's what I'm doing now. I'm trying to shed some light about this subject in a way. So the project is a collaboration between Kings and Sara Sharma, who is um, just a fantastic artist and who had a real interest in the issue of human trafficking and modern slavery and particularly um, around the impacts of that on women. And we found ourselves really interested in this, um, this concept about survival and recovery. Um, so moving away from um, documenting the problems associated with trafficking and moving towards um, a focus on what happened after trafficking what, um, how did women survive, how did women recover. It was really important to all of us that we worked with women who felt safe, um, both um, physically and psychologically to take part in the interviews. Um, and that, for me, part of that is working with a really expert organisation, knowing that women are part of an established support system. So we collaborated with Helen Bamba Foundation, who are um, an amazing um, NGO who've been working in this area for several years. have got so much expertise um, around providing um, psychotherapeutic and other forms of support um, to trafficked people and, other, and survivors of other forms of human cruelty. So um, Sara and Sean both came to us with the, the project saying they really wanted to look into the um, recovery of survivors and asked whether they could sit and interview some of our clients. And so Sara, along with a trained academic interviewer, has interviewed a few of our clients to really understand what recovery means to them, what does it look like. And it's a subject that's really important for us at the Helen Bamba Foundation because we find that trafficking survivors in particular have a really complex relationship with recovery. People can seem to be doing well and then some think whether it's a bad housing or a home office decision or a work um, decision or a relationship can really kind of just break that down and they become more vulnerable again and vulnerable to exploitation. So what recovery is and, and how it comes about is a really kind of critical arm of what we do here at the Helen Bamba Foundation, what we're really interested in finding out with Sean and Sara as well. Now we are near Helen Bamba Foundation. I just went with Vicky there and we had a meeting with one survivor. We just had a meeting there with one survivor. Yeah, it's very unusual to be in a one room, small room, one to one having contacts and conversation with uh, women that experience trafficking. Yeah, I mean, when you're talking about trauma and like really challenging things that have happened to people, like you have to have the awareness that you were asking somebody to tell you quite possibly some of the worst things that have ever happened to them. Um, but it's also, you're, you're doing it for a reason, that's sort of how you kind of, I don't know, rationalise it. But you are doing this to understand how people recover after trauma, after human trafficking. It's a question that's not been asked and answered very well before we've kind of not really done this sort of research. And so you're asking these questions not to upset somebody, you're asking them to make sure that you can sort of help other people. After listening, to their stories and after listening to their experiences, I tried subconsciously, I'm leaving this experience uh, because uh, it's a very dense experience, really, and it's a totally different world for me. 
So it's like diving into another world and uh, feeling everything about it. So I'm trying to go out and act as a observator and uh, then go back to my studio and see what the outcome will be. So after meeting them and hearing their stories and uh, knowing more about what they've been through, uh, I go back to my studio and I start work without any plans about the outcome of my paintings. Because I like, I think that the subconscious mind is a big, big source of uh, inspiration and a big source of creativity, I think. And that's how I mainly work. I try to let my subconscious mind to go through my work. I wanted to, uh, to work on the different ages of uh, a woman because this idea is very appealing to me. And also uh, because what I've heard from the woman that I've met, they always speak about past and future and present as if they are the same moment for them. So they don't feel, uh, they don't have any view or any uh, expectation about the futures, because their futures, because they are mainly uh, surviving. They are not living their life, they are surviving and uh, that's why the future is not there. What matters is the moment for them. I like to create all kinds of contrasts in my work with paint, with color, with the different layers, with, uh, with anything. I, I like the idea of death and life, black and white. That's why maybe I work a lot in contrast. Because I think uh, everything has to uh, two face, dual, dual, dual realities. I think uh, when you want to think about some something or know about something or experience something, you have to feel it with all your body. It's not only you have to read about it and learn about it in your mind. I think knowing about anything is like feeling it, living it. That's how I try to live and discover any subject in my work. But there's this bit at, towards the end and she just says, yes, I'm here. And I was like, wow, that's just... Really? That's just like, it's, it's three words. Mm. But I, I don't know, that was the most powerful mm. bit for me, thinking about how this is around kind of survival and recovery. And she felt she hadn't recovered yet and she, and she had a long way to go. Mm. But she's like, yes, I'm here. And I thought that was just such a statement of intent. You know, we talked about we can't depict mm. the women as they are. We can't paint the portraits of women because we need to protect their identities. And thought, how are you going to how are you going to be able to paint anything mm. at all? And this idea of being able to paint a feeling. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's that's fascinating mm. to me. But when you look at it, look at the painting you can kind of inhabit that really that feeling and I that agree. sense. <clears throat> because it's not an illustration. Mm. What I'm doing is not an illustration and it's not mainly portraiture. It's, it's, a, it's like a new discovery in a visual way. So it's like a research at the mm. same time, but visual, visual research. Visual research. I think if you kind of look back through time, actually a lot of artists are scientists and a lot of scientists are artists. Um, and I wonder whether we've lost some of that. 
there, there is overlap in what you're doing as a, as a scientist particularly as a, as a social scientist, as someone who's working with um, qualitative kind of interview data, um, you're not passively um, observing, you're engaging with a subject and you're generating and creating something from that and you're trying to get to and convey an understanding of some truth um, and I think that is the same for art, that Sarah is um, engaging with a subject, um, both the, the subject of modern slavery as a whole and with individual subjects and the women that she has interviewed and she is trying to get to a truth through her understanding and her response to that and creating something that people can use to further their understanding. So although we are different in output, um, I think actually there's a lot of similarity in approach and that isn't something I've had an opportunity to really reflect on or engage with um, until that project and I think that's even just that realisation um, has been really exciting for me. Oh my god. So the, was this figure there? No, no, when I saw it before, mm. it was this, the girl sitting, yeah. um, and then the older woman. Mm. So none of, none of this was here. Mm. That's incredible. What are you calling this one? Four ages. Four ages. Four ages. Wow. It's amazing. What do you think when you, when you look at it? Um, I enjoy looking at it because uh, each time I look at it, I discover another detail and uh, another expression in the faces. And, uh, I really like it. And I love the big size also. It's very dominating. I'm glad to hear your impression about it. I like it. <laughs> You've seen this one before. Mm. Yeah. yeah, this was the one where, when we, when we were looking at it before, and said, I think it's really like, I think for me it really plays with the trafficking imagery in a really interesting way because so much of the trafficking is around kind of like hiding from the camera and cowering and in this one the, the body is being protected rather than shielded and the face is being covered but not in that kind of cowering cringing way it feels really kind of purposeful you never could imagine what what paintings were going to be like when we started and I know you said that you can't imagine that when you start either I mean, when you're at the canvas but it's just incredible seeing them Thank you.